So what are entity relationship diagrams? So ER diagrams visualize the relationship between entities within a database. So it's a design or blueprint of our database. And we base them off of our conceptual model. And there are several ways to depict ERDs, and we're going to use a notation called IDF1X. And you'll see that in a second. But one thing before I get there is I just want to convey to you that this is the next step of detail past the conceptual model. So we built the conceptual model. We're going to take that conceptual model, and based on that, we're going to look at those entities and then use that as a basis to build out the entities into our our basically entity relationship diagram. Okay, so when do we use an ER diagram? We do this when we want to design a new database, basically to break down you know the problems into smaller steps and to help see relationships. So one of the things I mean by breaking down the problem the smaller steps is we're getting down to the point where we want to actually design the table itself. So what are the fields? Are they required? So what I mean by fields, I mean columns. What are the data types? Those types of things. Also, when you get a very complex database, it can help you to debug the database. It can help you see how tables from end to end in the database are related to one another. So if you have complicated joins, looking at an ER diagram can help you map out that process by graphically representing the database structure. So it's pretty cool. So let's start with our first step. Let's look at a entity relationship um, diagrams table. And this is using the, the notation that I mentioned. So one of the first things I want to point out to you is the table name. The table name is shown at the top. Okay, so we have the table name. And then secondly, is the primary key. And as you all know, the primary key is what uniquely identifies a row in the database. So there's two things here. The primary key is going to have a PK shown here. So PK and also the primary key is underlined. So the column name of the primary key is underlined. And then third, you'll see that the columns are listed going down. Now, Alternatively, we can also have columns with variable um, data types, but I didn't put the data types in on this table. Uh, just from a point of view of that, at this point of working with the entry relationship diagram, I think it's more important to get the relationships and the column names down. And as we, when we actually get to writing the actual scripting of the database, it's usually when I work with the data types. So here's what the relationships look like and the notation. Some of this should look very familiar. So you're going to see the crow's feet notation again. So it's a one to many relationship. But what is it a one to, re one to many relationship of? Well, there's a couple hints here to help us find that out. First of all, there's the store ID on the store table. It's primary key. So there's one store ID. So it's one to many. And there's a foreign key, see how it says FK, and then we named it store ID. So this actually really helps with readability also, because we're using the same IDs. If I would have called this like, I don't know, um, building ID, you'd be going store ID, there's a building ID. I don't know how they relate. But if you start naming the columns the same names, it actually starts to read like they relate, and they actually do, and it makes your data structure readable and, and that is so important and everybody's going to love you for it so in this case when i have a primary key that store id and i have a foreign key value that store id i immediately can see that i have a one to many in my table and in this case here too you see it with the one to many relationship with the crow's foot and in this case with the uh, FK we have the foreign key and then one other thing here we denote as another constraint as a unique key so we're saying that not only will I have an ID that's uniquely identifying the row in my store table but 
each store must be uniquely named. So I can't have two stores that are called like East Side Pizza, for instance. Okay, I could have like East Side Chicago Pizza and East Side Naperville Pizza, but they can't be both East Side Chicago Pizza. So this wraps up our quick lesson on NTD relationship diagrams.